What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko. Uh, we're still at the regional. We actually, Alpha and I actually came back to the same spot. We did the hero deck profile, if you guys saw that. Maybe yesterday, maybe a few days ago. Uh, we're playing side events now. And in today's side events, we're not playing hero. We are playing Dino Morphia. Um, and before I get into the deck profile though, I am playing some sauce in this list, which is nice. You guys will see the sauce later. You, sauce not now, sauce later. Uh, but make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't already. We're on the road to 10,000. And uh, that's, that's it. Let's get right into the deck profile. So uh, the stuff you guys are going to see here is not really saucy. It's just Dino Morphia. So you're playing three Theresia, two Diplo. Uh, I was actually playing three at one point, but I think it makes more sense to play two now with uh, the other cards that I'm playing. Um, and you guys might be wondering like, oh, two is always right. Well, it's like if you're playing pure, it's hard to justify two because as soon as they're gone, they're gone and you kind of don't have a grind game. But I will say that uh, two now is fine because you have other ways to do damage and win games. So I like these two. And then I'll just, I guess I'll finish off the whole Dynamorphia package. So I'll do uh, three Frenzy, uh, three of the Domain, of course, uh, one Sonic and one Alert. So I'm not playing Brute. I'm uh, not playing any of the other ones. And the reason is because you want to keep this engine as small and as consistent as possible. Um, it's one of those things where it's like Brute is a good card, don't get me wrong. It's just kind of like, it's not super impactful in today's format. Uh, Sonic is really important to dodge like evenly matched and just general spell and trap hate. And then Alert is obviously really good because it brings back your extra and brings back two level fours if you need to make a rank four or just push for more damage. So these are just the most important ones. We're not playing trap trick and all that searchable stuff because we want to be able to play around evenly, play around a lot of these uh, hand traps and stuff. So, you, or not hand traps, play around evenly, play around back row hate. So to do that, we're playing hand traps. That's what I meant to say. Uh, but that's it for the uh, Dynamorphia stuff. I think this is all you really need. I don't think anything else is really mandatory. So uh, I don't know how many cards that is, but that's the core. The rest of the deck is like essentially just flex spots. Uh, one thing I really like is three Fenrir. I think Fenrir is really important. It's one of those cards that one, again, the, the biggest problem with this deck is it doesn't put up enough damage and this helps you put up more damage. It just helps you in the battle phase a little bit more. So that's why I like playing the three Fenrir. And then for hand traps, we're playing three Ash, uh, three Imperm. And uh, this is not a hand trap, we're playing two Book of Moon. And the reason we're playing these ratios is because, uh, okay, so there's actually a few options or a few reasons. Uh, Imperm and Ash, I think, are just the best and most generic hand traps in the format right now. Like, they may not be the most impactful, but they're good into every deck. And then Imperm, obviously, being a trap too, is good going first, good going second to break boards. So these six, I think, are pretty uh, self explanatory. I think the Book of Moons is what I really need to explain. So the reason I actually really like Book of Moon in this deck is, well, there's a couple. The first reason is it's really good against Kosh, against Math Mech, against uh, just a lot of decks in general like this format. Alpha, what other decks are there in this format that Book of Moons is really good against? Kosh, Math Mech, Sprite. It's really good into Sprite as well. Um, Alpha's looking at me. But he's Hero. Not. Hero. Yeah, I didn't... I, I, whatever. Anyways, the point is, uh, Book of Moon is really good into that. But then the other reason is I'm actually playing Cross Out in this deck. And because Book of Moon is so relevant in today's format, a lot of people can just Book of Moon your Rextrum and you're kind of in a bad spot. So this is actually a Cross Out target as well, which is nice. Um, and it's good going first and good going second, right? Because going second, you have this in your hand. Um, you can just Book of Moon an opponent's monster and then continue your combos. Going first, you just set it and it's kind of like a trap for you, right? So I really like this card. I think it's really important to be playing. Uh, I'm only playing two because I'm playing another card, which is more saucy. And I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but we're playing three Fossil Dig. Uh, of course, gets you to the Dynamorphia cards. And then um, you guys are going to laugh at me. Uh, we're playing one Prost and two Tactics. I only have one Prost, okay? I only own the one Prost. You would play three though. But listen, this is not bad either. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain why this is not bad either. And this is kind of like where the sauce stems from or part of the sauce. Um, and I'll, I'll explain that in a minute. But then uh, for the rest of the cards, we're playing one called by, two cross out. So essentially three called by, uh, one duster. And then um, before I get to the sauce, which is right here, uh, cross out is really good. I want to explain this because a lot of people like always say like, you know, why play cross out? It's kind of bedge. It's not really great. Well, keep in mind, this deck loses pretty hard to Ash, loses hard to Harpy's Feather Duster. Like here, I'm going to lay out a list of cards that you can cross out and they're just insane. So you can cross out Fenrir, which is like a legit thing. This actually happens because if your opponent goes like, if, you, if you're going first and you set this, your opponent goes special Fenrir, activate effect to search. A lot of time they're gonna wanna search Unicorn or something like that. You go cross out Fenrir, it's just kind of insane. But that, that doesn't happen too often. Cross out Imperm is really important because they Imperm Rexstrom a lot of the time and Rexstrom is obviously really important. Cross out Ash. You can cross out Book of Moon. You can cross out Harpy's Feather Duster. Bro, you can even cross out Prosperity. Like every deck is playing Prosperity. Like, you know what I mean? Like there's so many things that you can hit with cross out and it's just weirdly enough works in this deck. So I know my logic is like, it's. I know the logic is there for, you could say like, oh, every deck can do that. But it's like this deck can fit so many different cards that every deck is playing. So that's why I think cross out is important. And then for the sauce, uh, three Soul of the Supreme King. 
So this card is low-key insane. Uh, what it does is, so you activate it, you pay half your life points. So it synergizes really well with the Dynamorphia stuff because you're paying half your life points. And then you special a Supreme King Zark from your extra deck. Now you guys might be thinking like, oh, Spango, you're summoning a 4K beater, who cares? Well, first of all, that's actually kind of relevant because depending on when you're using this, there's a lot of time you don't actually necessarily use it on your opponent's turn. You're gonna activate it back on your turn, have a 4K beater and go for game. But anyways, that's not important. The important part about this is that um, when your opponent activates a spell card after you summon your Zark, you can banish this from the graveyard and then you can summon like one uh, Crystal Wing, one Rebellion Dragon, or one Ixies Dragon, um, one fusion dragon and uh, one pendulum dragon, I think. I, I, that's that's kind of how it goes. You don't care about any of the other names. The only one you care about is the synchro dragon, which is crystal wing, because essentially you're putting up now a monster negate or a spell and trap negate, depending on the situation that you're faced in. And it puts a body on your side of the field, which means that now this deck, like, you know, everyone always makes fun of it because they're like, oh, you always losing time. You can't do enough damage. Well, this is going to help you put more damage on the board and put more negates up on the board, which this deck, other like other than Rexstrom, like, which is a skill drain, this deck doesn't really have negates per se, right? Sonic, I guess, is a negate. This deck doesn't really put up negates. So this kind of does that for you and puts that body on your side of the field. Uh, so that's it for the main deck. It's 40 cards in the main deck. For the extra deck, I'm going to be quick here because these are pretty like self-explanatory. Three Rexstrom, of course. Uh, this is your boss monster of the deck. You always want to end on this. Um, and, and you just want to keep putting him on the board because a lot of time your opponent can't play. Uh, three of Catrogena and then two of the Stealth Bergia. These, this is literally just used to make this. So a lot of the time, like when you go into like uh, Frenzy, you use this just so you can make this so you don't have to use your Catrogenas. So literally just fodder. Then we're playing uh, two Dolka as well as one Logia. These, you go into them sometimes. Most of the time you'll go into them when you activate your alert. If you're not summoning back your Rexstrom with alert, and then you can summon back two of your Dino Morphias and then make one of these. Uh, again, just, you know, utility cards that can come up. And really, they're really important, they're really powerful cards. Then for the Zark package, we're playing one Zark. Uh, one Crystal Wing and then one Clear Crystal Wing or Crystal Clear Wing. These are really good. I don't play any of the other ones because the other few, the Fusion, the Ixies, like they don't do anything with Melt Materials on them for the Ixies. Um, Starving Venom only gets effect when it's Fusion Summon, uh, so it's not really important. The reason I'm playing two targets here though, and then the, only the one Zark, is because this card, how it works, is when you banish it from your graveyard, you shuffle the Zark back into your extra deck. So this you can use more than once, right? And then essentially what happens is you really make which one depending on the, the matchup you're against. So like if you think spell and trap negates are important, you make this one. If you think monster negates are important, you make this one. So it's, it's really nice in that sense. So it gives you those options. You can't summon both because they're both synchro dragons. You need to summon like one synchro dragon only. But again, if you're activating this more than once in a duel, you can you have multiple options, right? Because Zark is always gonna be recyclable. So, um, this is all you need. You don't want to use too much extra deck space on these. Uh, and then lastly, um, this is part of the spice I was talking about earlier. We're playing that Rise Heart. And uh, I'm going to actually explain this one because I've gotten comments in the past like, why are you playing a Rise Heart? You're not playing Cash or whatever. Okay, so let me explain this real quick. Specifically because we're playing Triple Tactics Talent. So a Rise Heart has the effect where you can summon this on any Kosh or monster if your opponent activates a Shangri La for the turn. Or if, sorry, if a Shangri La on the field, I should say, is activated on the turn. So in the, in the Koshtera matchup, your opponent will activate a Shangri-La a lot of the time on your turn. And then what happens is now they've activated a monster effect. So because they've activated a monster effect, you can go TTT. Now instead of using the draw two effect or whatever, you actually use a change of heart effect. Take your opponent's Shangri-La, right? Now that you've taken your opponent's Shangri-La, you can, and it uses effect, you can just make your own Arise Heart on top of their Shangri-La. So it breaks the Shangri-La lock, right? The other thing you can do is, if your opponent does have, let's say you're going up against Cash as well, and you summon a Fenrir, yeah. and your opponent uses a Shangri-La somewhere, you can actually just use that Fenrir to make an Arise Heart because Shangri-La has now been activated, right? So in both situations, whether you're taking your opponent's card or whether you have your own um, Koshtera monster, you can make an Arise Heart, which is a beater for you, um, and it's a macro cosmo, which is really powerful, right? So that's kind of the synergy with Arise Heart, and that's why we're playing the one. So for anyone who like, because I get these comments before, because I've, I've played this before, that's kind of how Arise Heart works. Um, lastly, I'm going to quickly show you guys a side deck. Again, side deck, depending on where you are, uh, you can change it up to whatever you feel is best. We're playing three Lightning Storm, three Nibiru, and three Evenly Mash. These are my going second cards. You just need to be able to go second and not lose games. And these cards, of course, really important into everything. Into Kostra, into Kostra, into Spray, into back row, into everything. Uh, this is mostly for back row decks, so uh, yeah. There's that. Nine cards right there for going second. And then for going first, I'm playing two Ferret Flames, a book, uh, the third Book of Moon. You can kind of play three Ferret Flames if you want. I think Ferret Flames is really powerful. Uh, but it's only good going first. Like, it's not bad going second, but it's really only good going first, which is why I'm siding it and not maining it. And uh, yeah, again, like I said, you can play a third one if you want. But I like the third Book of Moon just because it's just really good in going first and second. So depending on where you need it. And then lastly, I'm playing a 2D Barrier as well as one Crossout. So the third Crossout, I should say, because I'm maining two already. So a lot of the time, you know, people are 
people are playing this in their side decks for like Brandon or whatnot, you really don't want to lose to your opponent calling confusion on you. So that's why I cross out into this. So another reason why cross out is really good. But then the really nice thing is, if you're going first into Brandon or whatever, you can actually just side these in yourself and then call fusion. And then you don't actually have to summon your fusion monsters like that turn. So you just shut them out and then on your turn you can activate your fusion traps, right? So, or you can just continue comboing depending on where the situation is, right? Um, so that's why I really like these cards. And then even if you negate, let's say you even have a Rexstrom on the board and you use the barrier call fusion against Branded, even if you're negating your own Rexstrom, like that doesn't matter. You're, 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 time, you're turn skipping them, right? So the Rexstrom will be live again on your turn anyway, so it's not a big issue. Um, but that's it. Um, that's the main deck, side deck, and extra deck. Uh, this is my saucy Dynamorphia list. I think you guys can see with the cross out, with the TTT, uh, with the Rise Heart, with all that stuff. Um, this deck is good. I think it's uh, it's really powerful and I'm excited to play it today. Uh, so if you guys enjoyed today's video, uh, first of all, let me say a big thank you to Alpha for being my cameraman today. Um, I appreciate you. And then, uh, yeah, make sure to like and subscribe if you guys haven't already. And with that, Spanko, signing out. Peace. One cross.